In nature and everyday life, we observe reflection very frequently. You see the ball hitting the wall and rebounding towards you. Something similar happens in reflection of light. Look at this puppy drinking water. The puppy is surprised to see its face reflected by the water. Here you can see the mountain being reflected by the water surface. Are you surprised? So now, can we define what reflection is? Reflection is the phenomenon in which light rays on striking a surface are sent back into the same medium. Remember the ball being sent back after hitting the wall. Much the same here. Reflection of light can be regular or irregular depending on the surface. Regular reflection helps in the formation of images. Take the case of an irregular surface. All the parallel rays reflected from the surface are not parallel. The reflection is irregular or diffused and we see objects lying around us. To understand reflection, we need to define certain terms. The perpendicular drawn at the point of contact of the light ray on the reflecting surface is called the normal ray. The light ray which strikes the reflecting surface is called the incident ray. The light ray which bounces back into the same medium after reflection from the reflecting surface is called reflected ray. The angle which the incident ray makes with the normal to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence is called angle of incidence. The angle which the reflected ray makes with the normal to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence is called angle of reflection. The angle between the polished surface and the incident ray is glance angle of incidence. The angle between the polished surface and the reflected ray is glance angle of reflection. We now pass on to defining a virtual image. Take the instance of a plane mirror. Actually, no image is formed as the light rays do not pass through the surface. But yet, you get to see your own image. Such an image is called a virtual image. We have seen virtual images. Let's see real images. The images which can be captured on a screen are called real images. There are three types of mirrors. Convex, plane and concave mirror. Convex and plane mirror always give erect images. A concave mirror gives inverted images but for objects placed close to it. Did you know the ability of a surface to return light back to its source is retroreflection. Speed of light is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Do you know what a signal mirror is? A signal mirror is a small mirror carried by hikers and trekkers to signal for help in case of emergency. Can you guess how a signal mirror works? You must have tried to bounce sunlight on your friends' faces while playing. The signal mirror is based on the same principle. It is held in the proper position to reflect sun rays onto the target object like an aircraft or a ship and rocked to produce flashes. Mirrors are used in a wide range of applications.
Let us study the reflection of light by a plane mirror and the characteristics of the image formed. For this, we will consider an extended object, which is a collection of many point objects. Consider an extended object AB placed in front of a plane mirror MM prime. Let A prime B prime be the image formed. Ray AN is normally incident on the mirror and gets reflected along NA. Ray AO is reflected along OR. The reflected rays, when extended backwards, meet at A prime. Ray BO is reflected along OB. Extend the ray backwards and draw a perpendicular at A prime to reveal the image position. Thus, we find that the height of A prime B prime equals height of AB and the distance of A prime B prime from the mirror equals distance of AB from the mirror. Also, the image is erect, that is, upright. The image formed is a virtual image, which means it is formed at a location where light does not reach. This is in contrast to real images, which are formed on the same side of the mirror and in which light rays pass through the image location, as in the case of concave mirrors. What will the image of this placard placed in front of a plane mirror look like? The text will be laterally inverted. That is, it will read T-H-G-I-L. Thus, the image formed by a plane mirror is laterally inverted with respect to the object. That is, the image is reversed from left to right. You may have noticed the word ambulance written as E-C-N-A-L-U-B-M-A. -A -A. This is to enable drivers to read it correctly in a rear view mirror. Writing text in reverse order with each letter reversed is called mirror writing. Do you know of any more examples of mirror writing? Leonardo da Vinci, the great painter, used mirror writing in most of his works. Ophthalmologists use reverse Snellen charts for eye testing. These charts are viewed through a mirror. The image formed by plane mirrors is always virtual, erect, laterally inverted, of the same size as the object, and at the same distance from the mirror as the object. How many children are there in this photograph? There is only one child. The one standing in the center. The rest are his reflections. How do you think this was achieved? Multiple images can be obtained by using two plane mirrors inclined at an angle. When an object is placed between two inclined plane mirrors, the reflection from each mirror acts as the object for the other mirror, and thus multiple images are obtained. The number of images changes when the angle between the two mirrors is changed. The number of images formed, n, is n equals 360 divided by theta minus 1, where theta is the angle between the mirrors.
kaleidoscope usually consists of three mirrors facing each other. Objects placed at the end of it are reflected multiple times, resulting in beautiful symmetrical patterns. Examples of multiple reflections in real life. Multiple reflections. Imagine you are a secret agent. You are on a mission where you have to keep watch over a suspect's den that is behind these tall barricades. You are in a fix. No, wait. You've got an idea. Yes, that's it. Why didn't you think of this before? A periscope is an optical device that can be used to see over walls and around corners. The word periscope originates from two Greek words, peri, which means around, and skopos, which means target. It consists of a tube. that has mirrors set parallel to each other at a 45 degree angle across the tube. The periscope has eyepieces at both the ends. Let's understand how this device works. We will try to see what is going on behind this wall. Looks like the suspect is enjoying his afternoon siesta. So, we can relax and continue. The top eyepiece of the periscope is in line with the target. Light rays reflected from the target enter through the first eyepiece. Hit the first mirror and get reflected towards the second mirror. On hitting the second mirror, they get reflected again and pass through the second eyepiece to enter the observer's eye. This periscope is the simplest. A more complex periscope uses prisms instead of mirrors to obtain magnified images. Lenses are also fitted to get clearer images. These are used in submarines for sailors to see the ocean surface. Multiple reflections. Two parallel plane mirrors. Let's experiment a little more with two plane mirrors. Try standing between two plane mirrors that are kept parallel to each other. How many images are formed? Let us try to understand what's happening here. To begin with, we'll trace the path of the light that is reflected from the front. These rays fall on the first mirror and the first image is formed. Let's call it I1. This image, I1, now becomes the object for the second mirror that is kept parallel. A second image is formed. Let's call it I2. I2 now becomes the object for the first mirror. And I3 is formed. 
this pattern of multiple reflections keeps on continuing infinitely. The light falling from the back of the object also follows the same pattern of reflection. This results in the formation of an infinite number of images. What can you say about the size of these multiple images? Are they all the same as that of the object? Remember, it is one of the most important characteristics of an image formed in a plane mirror. Yes, the size and the height of the images are the same as those of the object. However, to our eyes, each reflected image looks diminished in size. Let's investigate this. Look at this arrangement of matchsticks. Do the heights of the first matchstick and that of the last appear the same? It seems as if the sticks become smaller as their distance from your eyes increases. This is called perspective error. And this is exactly what happens with multiple images formed by two plane mirrors kept parallel to each other. Before moving on, here's a quick question. We have just seen how by placing plane mirrors parallel to each other, we can obtain an infinite number of images. However, in the case of a periscope, though the mirrors are kept parallel to each other, a single image is obtained. Why? When two plane mirrors are kept parallel to each other, the light rays keep on reflecting between them infinitely. In a periscope, the two plane mirrors are set parallel to each other, but inclined at 45 degrees. As a result, the reflected rays do not return to the first mirror, but move towards the eye of the observer. Thus, only a single image is formed. Multiple reflections. Two inclined plane mirrors. Now, let's experiment with plane mirrors that are inclined at an angle. A circular protractor is fixed at the base to measure the angle between the mirrors. Multiple images are still formed, but we count them. In this position, the number of images formed is 2. And the angle between the mirrors is 120 degrees. We will note down the number of images and the corresponding angle of elevation. Let's decrease the angle between the two mirrors. How many images are formed now? 3. And the angle of inclination is 90 degrees. The mirrors are perpendicular to each other. If the angle between the mirrors is decreased further to say 60 degrees, the number of images increases to 5. What can we conclude from these demonstrations? As the angle of inclination between the two mirrors decreases, the number of images formed increases. Can you tell how many images are formed when the angle between the two mirrors is 40 degrees? It is difficult to see with the mirrors inclined at such a small angle. Here's a simple formula that you can use to estimate the number of images formed based on the angle of inclination. A kaleidoscope. An amazing application of inclined mirrors is the kaleidoscope. It is a triangular tube made by joining three inclined mirrors. Two circular glass pieces with loosely packed colored objects like small marbles, beads and confetti are fixed at one end. Together, the three mirrors form multiple images of these objects. 
rotating the kaleidoscope creates different patterns from these multiple reflections. Let us quickly review what we have learned. If an object is placed between two plane mirrors inclined at an angle, then more than one image is produced due to multiple reflection of light. As the angle of inclination between the two plane mirrors is decreased, the number of images formed increases. If an object is placed between two plane mirrors, then an infinite number of images are produced.